Hi everyone, it's been a while since my last video. If you remember, I made a video about a course in Oxford University that no one talks about. And since then, that video has gained a little bit of attention around the world. And people have been asking me, how's the course like? How have you been? What I've been doing for the past whole year? When's my next video? And so on. So this video, I'm going to talk about my experiences over the past whole year. At the same time, I'm going to share some of the insight that I've taken nine modules in a year in one go and spoiler alert it did not actually go well so number one life experiences i remember when i back to study for the very first time after decades of working professionally it was so difficult that during my first module or first lecture actually i couldn't actually focus more than five minutes any anything after five minutes i would just tune out and i just lost all the progressions after so i kind of struggle on that and that actually lasts me for the first second third modules and then after that i decided to kind of develop the own time management and also our study strategies which i'll talk about now in regards of time management right if you if if you realize how this masters work, each module you have eight weeks of preparation actually to kind of finish the course completely. And you first you have a one week of pre-study, study work, and then a week of in-person, nine to five every Monday and Friday, except Friday will be shorter. And then uh, lastly, you have six weeks um, deadline to actually complete your assignments, which is not too bad. But if you look in advance, right, if you have a full-time job like myself, you have to do hustling, then you have to attempt to do a YouTube video like what I'm doing right now, then it will be genuinely difficult. So I then actually worked out a schedule that work around the two months timing, or I will basically plan my module in advance to know that what I'm going to take and so on. And then the second one is study strategies is where if basically you would need to study from the lower end all the way up to the end of the module, it will be difficult because there's so many stuff to learn within that two months and then during that week there's so many knowledge that need to be chucked in within that week so you couldn't really have an end-to-end -end understanding of the whole context of the course so what happened into that is i would suggest that if you need to take probably four modules a year five modules a year i would say take two modules that you like you related to and i think if you actually have 20 percent understanding of that course itself it will be easier for you to catch up and basically to finish the course in, in, in a timely manner as well and also actually ease you to study. So I ended up having five modules that I have to end-to-end -end study right from the beginning and then the rest four is just filler modules, which I call filler modules anyway, that I've already have some bit of understanding going into the course a bit relaxing because it's just adding more knowledge on top of that. So that's pretty much one of the one of the things I would I would say. And then also I reckon the expectations as well, because the expectation of work life study balance is that you're not gonna have your weekends anymore. So that's pretty much done deal. Number two expectations versus reality i think one of the most asked questions in my linkedin in my discord channel is what's the return on investment of the course itself what are you trying to do after the course me personally i always wanted to finish a master's in software engineering and it's it's for me it's a non-brainer because i just an hour away from my house it's oxford university and most importantly, it's part-time, which span across four years, that allowing me you know, sufficient time to actually finish it. However, I think a lot of people thought this course actually were allowing them to kind of get into Metas, get into Amazon, you know, having half million dollars a year salaries and all that. This isn't the course for that, in my humble opinion, really. And this, this course, is actually geared towards for people who already has about a decade of experience, probably five years experience in, in industries and then they would like to actually move towards or upwards in, in the management levels. This masters would tick the box if if they don't have a kind of formally professional degrees. And this this masters actually will fit in the criteria a lot better than, than anything else in, in the market right now. And also at the same time, not just that as well, and that's at the same time as well is the is the course itself. It it isn't majority of the course isn't practical at all, I would say, and I would say it's quite outdated as well. But it basically teaches you theoretically how a particular subject works fundamentally. So if you're coming in thinking you can learn some of the latest technologies, really blockchains and kind of things. They they iron it. There there's there's none courses like that. The majority of the course I took so far is basically theoretically proof, induction proof, you know, formally proof in set notations, how you can improve that that kind of design decisions and all that. Genuinely, it's not the dripped or the cool technology that you currently seen out online at the moment. 
So that that that's I need. So that that is this is basically the expectations and reality stuff I always want to talk about, which is extremely important. Number three, online versus on campus learning. This is a heated topic about two months ago. People have been discussing about whether online is a better solution for this course or is actually on campus learning for this course. And again, in my humble opinion, this this definitely needs to be on campus because it's not it's not just about Oxford University itself, right? It's also about the the university life around it. How you're gonna networking with people face to face, having a chat, and then actually knowing people in person, which is extremely important. I also see the point for people actually thinking. Well, if it's still online, it's pretty much the same thing because the course is only a week. And actually, I halfly agree on that because I think you you do get a full kind of benefit. As a full-time student, as a part-time student, you don't get like part-time benefits of that. You get a full-time benefit, I'll say, as a part-time student, and you didn't actually able to enjoy that because it, you only sees your colleagues uh, every once a week in in about three months' times and all that. And and I do I do wish that the university can do more for the students that、um, maybe for the students who want to stay in the campus itself. Is there any activities they can do? You know, is there is there any extra curriculums of learning they can do themselves as well? There are there are no official statements for the university to kind of encourage this kind of thing, but they also open that. You know, the campus is open twenty four seven around the year for people to actually stay on the, stay on campus if they wish to. At the same time, again, just reiterating the point is that there isn't much choices. You're only there for a week, and then after that, it's it's just that's it. But at the same time. As well, there's also the communities that you can visit other colleges for dinner, and then there is also events, hackathons, and all that. But you do have to reach out yourself to understand the community around it. And as a part-time student, just to clarify again, you can join, you know, those full-time students、uh, activities. You can reach out and help out and all that. So that 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 is a great thing about this course. is It's not just you know you don't part-time because of part-time. You do get the full thing of full-time. Originally, I also want to talk about. Some of the module I took, and I just decided that I'm gonna do that in the next video instead because that would deep dive from the modules and what I dislike about it, and that will deep dive a little bit why some of the module is more suitable to be online instead of in in person. Though in person is great because you pay so much money, you should be in place. Number four, honors outcomes. So after a year, I just felt that the whole course is a bit disappointment. Actually, it is not. It's not about having a high expectation of anything like that. It's just that. Because of I think because of a week in person course and then after that you don't talk to people ever again and it's actually got better because you got this call and then you got WhatsApp as well so things things like get better but it is a bit weird if you if you haven't actually had this experience before and you just it's basically a relationship of hi and and bye really but the good thing about the course itself is majority of the course is they are represented by really well known people um they are they are respected in the industry and and just one of the modules I just took、uh, a few weeks ago is a concurrency programming which is taught by the founders of、um, uh, Erlang Solutions Francesco. He able to incorporate his experience in, into his teaching, and if you are already in the industry for long enough, you will know what he's trying to say. He will teach you about how he experienced how he resolved particular technical challenging issues, and he's also very keen and very frank as well to to open up his experience and let you know how to、uh, actually approach this kind of、um, solutions, this kind of issues, and this is pretty much the good outcomes. I would say, but the bad one is some of the bad modules is quite not up to standard. I would say some of the lectures literally just read from the slides, and you couldn't really get the hang of it, right? You couldn't really actually understand what he's trying to teach. When he asked more question around it, he would say, "I'm a bit late in the schedule. Can we talk about it later?" And then he would never revisit that ever again. So this is pretty much some of my complaint and honest outcomes or honest opinions that's coming out of me. I do have a few more to share, but、um, I think I'll keep it here for this video because it's getting longer and longer. Which I will do more videos in the future. If you have any question you want to know, you definitely can leave down in comments and or join the Discord as well, which we can discuss that over there as well. That's fine enough for me. Number five. Discord channel. I've been talking about a lot of Discord channel in my video, and、uh, my our Discord channel is one year anniversary now, and it has grew to more than two hundred people, where we share a lot of knowledge around the course itself, especially what colleges you you want to choose, how you're actually going to fund yourself in this master's course, how you're going to travel, where you're going to stay, and all sorts of questions actually available in our Discord. It is a little bit of shout out because I do I do want people to join. The Discord and then share some of the experiences, especially especially the new people 
quite interested to join the course as well because it's very hard to find the information on the internet about this course itself despite it's been 30 years for the course right and recently we, we have Simon which is my new moderator he's very kind enough to actually uh, moderate my discord channel where he, it has exclusive channels now for people who are already enrolled into universities but rest assured that you don't get less what, what you what you have so far but so that if you are keen or interested to join the course just come to discord let's have a chat or if you just want to have a chat just drop your comments down below i'll be happy to answer them answer all the comments if i can and um that should be the end of my videos i will see you the next one peace